In 1895, a German professor named Wilhelm Röntgen accidentally discovered a new type of electromagnetic radiation that could penetrate objects. His discovery turned out to be very important. This is the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. The more you go to the left side of the spectrum, the shorter the wavelength becomes. As you can see, X-rays have a shorter wavelength than visible light, and they are powerful enough to penetrate objects, which is why we use them to take a look inside people's bodies. An X-ray setup relies on two components, a tube and a sensor. The tube is a device that produces the X-rays and sends them through the body of the patient. This tube is made out of glass. Inside it, there's a vacuum. This is required for producing X-rays. Now inside this tube, there is something called a cathode, and there is also something called an anode. When the X-ray machine is turned on, the anode becomes positively charged. This means that there's a lack of electrons inside that anode. The cathode is connected to a low voltage power supply. This cathode then heats up, just like the filament of a light bulb, it starts to glow. Now because of the intense heat inside the cathode, the electrons inside the wire start to gain kinetic energy. In other words, they start to move around, they start to vibrate. At some point, the vibration is sufficient to launch the electrons out of the wire for a few nanoseconds. And then during that incredibly short period of time, when the electrons aren't inside the wire, they suddenly get attracted by the anode. That's because electrons are negative particles and the anode has a massive positive charge. There's a huge lack of electrons inside the anode. So the electrons start to leave the cathode and fly toward the anode to compensate for that lack of electrons. The electrons then bump into the anode and when they do, they release photons. And these photons are the radiation produced by the tube. Here we have our X-rays. These X-rays then leave the vacuum tube through the side and fly through the patient's body. The X-rays first go through the leg of the patient. Then they hit a sensor plate. This used to be film, but these days it's a digital sensor. Now we can take our X-ray photograph. But how come that we can see the bones inside the leg? Well, that's because of the density of bones. Bones are quite dense, and because of this, X-rays can't get through them very well. The flesh and skin surrounding the bones, however, are not that dense, and the X-rays can easily go through them. Thanks to this difference, only the bones are visible on the photograph. And that is how X-ray works. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.